Aloha, I'm Felicia Miller Johnson, and I conduct work life video interviews with career professionals that become an awe into a conversation. Aloha and welcome to another episode of All Intuitive Conversation. I connect with my guests through Sakem Energy, all in the hopes of encouraging the guests and viewers like yourself to live smart and ascend to new levels of success in their work and life. Today, I have the pleasure of connecting with B. Wu. So let's bring her to the screen. Aloha, B. Wu. Aloha, Felicia. It's so nice to see you. It is nice to see you. So you and I have not connected before. So this is our first time of getting to have a conversation. Thank you so much for being open to this, this opportunity. So of course, I am already intrigued because your title says... Evidential medium be woo. So tell me more about you being a medium. I think the first most important thing is that a lot of times people hear that, not, not about me, but just in general, about somebody being a medium. They think either one, that they have these amazing powers that other humans don't. Like a magician? Uh-huh, yes. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Or two, that it's a scam that can't possibly be true. I won't even get into the whole Bible, the, like, this isn't in the Bible kind of thing or whatever. But I think that it's part of human nature to be able to do this. And in fact, I have a... I have a little private lesson course that I do. It's 45 minutes called Launch, Launching. In 45 minutes, I've taken people who've never done a medium reading to doing a medium reading. In 45 minutes? Yeah, in 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. How did you come up with that philosophy? Like that that idea yeah i think just from practicing and also because yeah i've had experiences but i'm not one of those people who were like you know when i was little i you know died and came back to life or you know i saw ghosts at the end of my bed i wasn't <laughs> not a ghost at the end of your bed that's not what you had the experience <laughs> right okay right yeah <laughs> kicking fun <laughs> images around me that's just that real. But I became interested in this, and so I started training formally, and I realized, wait a minute, you know, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this because I didn't naturally just start doing it. And so if I could train to do it, then why can't anybody? And, and the way I liken it, and I don't think I'm the person who created this analogy, but I don't mm -hmm. have to give credit to, but... You're like piano, right? Let's say you and I and Mozart all decide when we're little we want to play piano. We right. can all do it with lessons. Maybe Mo Mozart will be a genius and be able to play much better than you and I, maybe. You know, but we can all do it with training. And so I think that maybe it's not so much that I'm good at being aware of the other things around us but that most people are better at blocking them out. Mm. Okay. Because, yes, I definitely heard of individuals that have had experiences, but out of fear of the unknown, it's like, oh, nope, not going to do that, you know, completely um, shut that down. And then you were kind of indicating, you know, a lot, a lot of times also with um, certain forms of religion that, says that no this is not of light this may be of darkness and so individuals will you know shut that down um in doing that but i'm curious 
What was that moment? What was that experience when you decided that you were going to go down that pathway and say, yes, I'm going to embrace this, accept this Mm -hmm. into, to my life. What was that moment? That's a great idea. Um, All right. So I'll take you back a little bit. I became really intrigued with the TV show medium, which is, you know, fiction with actors and everything, but I thought it was so cool. But I didn't realize that this was based on a real person and that real people, like I might have, I must have known real people were mediums, but for some reason I blocked that out. And I just didn't realize that that was something that people actually did. And one day, I was going through a lot because I'm, I'm a child. Um, I was a victim of narcissistic abuse, mm. and um, from a parent who I forgave and everything. And then all of a sudden, my fifties parents started doing this again. Really threw me into like a post-traumatic thing. Mm-hmm. One day, very soon after this, maybe a month later, I was online. And somebody was offering medium readings, and I thought, okay. So I sat for like with cards and readings and the wheels and doing that. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I've never, you know, done this before. And she said, she said, I have your mother's mother here, and she's saying that your mother's being very harsh with you, like like not normally harsh. And and my grandmother was saying things like, you know. I don't know how this happened. Like, I don't understand how my daughter became like this and all this stuff. And I was like, what? Like, this woman couldn't know anything about me because I was going under, um, I had Bi Woo up there by accident. So um, she didn't even have my real name. So I wasn't posting anything about it. There was no way she could know this. And Mm -hmm. so I started taking classes with her. And um, at first I couldn't do it. And one day I had a dream. I woke up and that morning in the dream, I had these two women with names and I said, Oh, you know that thing. yeah. Dream of waking up. Uh huh. Keep going. It keeps coming up. Right. Mm-hmm. We had, I remembered, Oh, I'm, I'm in that class today. Why don't I just tell them my dream? And it turned out it was this woman's two aunts, the name, the description of them. And, so it started for me subconsciously. I mm-hmm. was too nervous consciously to do it. And so when I see people through it, I try to tap into their subconscious by, you know, going into different senses and relaxing them. And everybody I've done this with has been able to do it by 45 minutes. Wow, that's amazing. Because in the next card that came up was talking about the theme of purpose. And it says the trigger, what is the point of it all? The true statement, I am special. And it says, you have a unique place in this world with gifts and talents that only you can provide. Use your connection with the divine to share them. So now that you're tapping into these things and you you have this course what is like your underlining purpose for people to being able to learn this as well what's motivating you to say i want more people to be able to do this yeah it's that i think it's important for everybody to know that this is real and it exists and the reason i think it's important for them to know it is because it can give them peace and reassurance that they are forever that their loved ones who passed away are forever. Mm. And so instead of that fear that one day you no longer exist and that your loved ones who've passed away, that maybe they don't exist anymore, they're gone, to know not only do they exist, but they're with you. They stay with you. They keep up on what you're doing now. They send you love. They want you to know that they're here. Not not so much for themselves, but for you to keep... It's almost like we're in a marathon race, Felicia. And they're at the sidelines rooting for us. And and they, they feel our pain when we feel pain. And they know, well, if, they, if, if she or he only knows that I still exist and that I see them and I love them and I'm sending them love, wouldn't that make their lives better? 
part came up was like they're there to be able to provide wisdom, insight, um, knowledge about facilitating, navigating through the train um, frustrations and pains um, that we may experience here that are still in this this earthly earthly body. Yes. So you're traveling and you're doing all of this, these different things. And I know as um, as light workers and beings that there are still like sometimes struggles and things that we we have. We are still here on Earth. So the, the question that comes up next is, is what keeps BU up at night? <laughs> I'm laughing because most nights the past couple months... I'm up till 5.30 in the morning. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, Biwu is my station for being a medium. Uh-huh. I've had, that came shortened from Brindlewood, which is my actor name. I'm, in it. I'm also a trained actor, director. Well, I'm not trained as a director, but I'm also a director, writer, and editor. And I've been editing a short film that I've made, and Sometimes I can't stop. You know, I'm so passionate about it um, that I stay up till 5.30 in the morning. I, I got to get this done. So interesting. Working as the whole book that's there, studying, doing all those different things, writing, acting. Okay. So what is that storyline about? This particular storyline is about narcissistic abuse, which I mentioned earlier. It's domestic abuse. Mm. And the reason I felt strongly to do this, one is personal healing for myself, but also I'm in support group with about 6,000 other women who have dealt with narcissistic abuse from their mothers. And there's not much out there. There are not many stories out there empowering them and healing them. There are too many stories saying, but family's family, but it's your mother. You know, people, most people in society do not care that this woman, whoever she is, will be fraught with more abuse and mm. depression and low self esteem if she stays in contact with a toxic mother. But they say, oh, but she's your mother and now you're not taking care of her and she's. Mm. And, you know, not understanding the just the sheer trauma and mental torture that all these women have to deal with making that strong choice to go no contact. And so I made a film about it. It's short. It's probably going to be about 20, 25 minutes long when it's finished. Mm, Awesome. So it's like underneath all that, helping women to gain back control of their lives. Because I know with narcissistic behavior, there's so much of other people want to control and manipulate, gaslight um, individuals out of their life. So it sounds like this is encouragement to um, help those women gain back control of of their lives. So what, where would you like to see that movie, short film um, distributed? That's a good question. I've been focused so much on the art of it that I haven't even gone there. But what my plans are, my plans are to enter it into some film festivals and see if um, this is a right fit for maybe certain film festivals and Mm -hmm. maybe it can get out there that way. And then eventually finding a home for it on a streaming site. That's my idea, but I'm open to other ideas. Okay. Yeah, because this is now taking me back into the whole old school, like projector, film, reel. And, but the question was, is like, okay, we have these projects that we're working on, but like you said, it's like you make it, then now what? Um, definitely encouraging you to think about those avenues of where you would want to have it distributed. Um, also encouragement of, what that looks like as far as in, um, what do they call those? You know what they call, like a premiere or something like that. Like, what does that look like? Um, 
for you because this is definitely something, as you said, you're in a group with 6,000 plus some people that's um, impacting individuals, keeping people up, frustrated. Um, but going back to during that time, um, they wanted to give you like this encouraging word um, when you're staying up late and, you know, 530 and you're working on this project to continue to, you know, be encouraged in regards to that. And ultimately it says, if you believe it, you can do it. What you need to be a success will manifest. And so I think they're offering you encouragement that this is a great project and that you can do that. But do put some some mind and thought into once it's done, what am I going to do with that? Um, what avenues would be really good with that? And then even thinking about the woman that you're in with the group and encouraging, ask, like, where would you watch or see this, like to see this film or something like that? Like, it's okay to ask for support in that regard. You don't have to do it all on, on your on your own um, with that. And then it's interesting because I was drawn to um, a Psalms deck, and we were kind of just talking about the religion and the and the the Hebrew name. And so I wanted to say, the card you got is point out the road I must travel. I'm all ears. All eyes before you, Psalms 143.10. And I think that's connecting back to this road that you're traveling with your film, um, seeking the guidance of where are the eyes are going to lay on that and see it. Um, so again, Psalms 143.10, that may be encouraging, something um, further than that for you. But for those individuals that may be watching and they're like, yes. I want to either have a reading with B or have some other encouragement and be able to support her in her journey. Where can people connect with you? You can find me at NewYorkCityMedium.com or NYCMedium.com. Awesome. Well, Abibu, thank you so much for joining me today and being a guest on All Intuitive Conversation. Thank you for those that have watched. If you're interested in being a guest, reach out to me at sevenfoldcoaching.com. And until we meet again, this has been an All Intuitive Conversation. Mm -hmm.